Hi, good morning. I'm Dr. Ben Newman. I study coronaviruses for a living, and I'm here to try and answer your questions with um, published science as far as possible. So, let's go. The next question is from Vicky. Good morning, Vicki. Um, Hi, Dr. Ben. I know you've had similar questions to this, but I saw this story today, and sorry about the source newspaper, which is The Sun. Yeah, and I, I think The Sun usually reports on actual incidents. It's just that they take a particular point of view uh, regarding those incidents, which tends to be whatever, you know, sort of uh, amplifying the alarm and scariness of whatever it is and kind of burying uh, anything that might uh, be reassuring. <laughs> but it's a thing that people clearly want because they are in business and uh, doing a great trade. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> fine. Anyway, so with that in mind, yeah, the sun, uh, never change. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, so the article, uh, seems to confirm that COVID was in the UK in December. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, is there anything in this, uh, mainly asking as my mom was very ill over Christmas with what looks like classic COVID symptoms. All right. So there's a couple things in the article. So I've got it open down below. And so if I look away, it's cause I'm scrolling up and uh, having a look here. Um, first of all, this is mostly a um, point of view article from the uh, uh, point of view of the daughter of this man who has died. So yeah, she's lost her father and she's a little upset about it. And yeah, she's looking for somebody, you know, like who the heck let this happen? Which, yeah, that's, I, I totally get that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a lousy position to be in. Um, so the man falls ill in the middle of December. Now, this may be COVID or this may be other things. Because remember, the middle of December, this is also flu season. You get uh, RSV, respiratory syncytial virus. You get your pneumoviruses, your metanumoviruses uh, going around at this time. And you get some of your uh, picornaviruses. You get a few coronavirus colds going around other than SARS coronavirus too. So there are a lot of possibilities for what this could be that first made the man sick. But eventually he goes to hospital in um, on January 7th. And then eventually, if I remember right in the article, dies on January 30th, which would be a long time, but not unheard of for a uh, COVID death. Usually those are within about a month of infection. This would be a month and a half, but th there have certainly been cases. So it's possible. Um, but the other possibilities here are that he picked up the virus in hospital or caught something and then caught COVID. Regardless, what they are saying now is that they went back, did a um, did not post-mortem examination, some kind of autopsy, took a tissue sample out and have tested it. And um, sure enough, there's SARS coronavirus 2 in there. So at least on January the 30th, uh, of this year, there was SARS coronavirus 2 in a person in the UK, um, which would still make him the first person outside of uh, China, I think, according to the article anyway, to have died from uh, the virus or a person who didn't catch it in China. They're saying he didn't have any uh, history of uh, international travel, which, yeah, again, kind of makes sense. That's fine. Not everybody does that. But so then, um, yeah, she's really mad about a lot of stuff in here and um yeah so some of the stuff that uh is in the article um is uh so for example COVID has obviously been around for much longer than we know um there's a cover-up uh and now we know this we don't know the scale of it. again this is unlikely so here's the here's the uh evidence that it's probably not uh, been around much longer than that. So the earliest sequences, by the time we got the first 10 or so sequences of the coronavirus, we're talking end of January, pretty much. Those sequences, which date from December and early January, are really close together. There are something like five or six founder mutations that you find at that point and we've got a virus that we know changes and has changed since then at a rate of, uh, let's see if I remember right, it's about 30 mutations per year. That's what uh, we're expecting. 
Um, and so you turn that into months, and so, all right, how long does it take you to get uh, six mutations? Neighborhood of two months, maybe a little over. So rewind the clock, about that amount, and you're in November. And so what that means is that all of the currently existing um, coronavirus cases seem to have a common point of origin in November. Now, if the virus existed before that, that's fair. I mean, it must have existed in a bat or something like that, or a pangolin or whatever animal they're going to figure out uh, it actually came from. But that means all those other viruses left no trace. They infected people and just completely disappeared, or they just infected one person at a time who got it, got sick, and then just gave it to one other person at a time, um, like that, because there is, there's no genetic trace of anything that goes back earlier than November of last year. Um, so part of the article is saying that China covered it up, and I don't know that it is China the country. I, a country is a big place. It's, uh, we're talking about the actions of individuals, and I think that um, there are multiple ways that this can happen. Um, you've got a lot of officials whose job it is to make the people above them look good, and it doesn't look good if you know people are getting sick. I, I can see why individuals might do this. It's possible, but for an entire country to do this, you pretty much have to have the person at the top telling all the people under them and getting complete control all the way down uh, to get this to work. And that can happen occasionally, I think. It seems like it ought to be theoretically possible, but it seems like it would be real difficult in practice. And it seems like there would be cracks somewhere. And, I mean, we saw the uh, uh, TikTok videos and things of people who were not happy at all about being locked down in Wuhan around that time. There was, um, yeah, certainly some resistance, but there wasn't a lot of evidence at the time. And the other um, uh, telling thing I think here is that of the first cases they were able to pick up, which are uh, like December cases uh, just going into January, over ha around half of those uh, were associated with that one particular market. So you got a pretty, you're pretty close to the point of origin in genetic terms and in epidemiological terms. And you've just got to start inventing a lot of things that we don't have any evidence for um, uh, in order for this virus to be in the human population circulating um, uh, much earlier than that. Now, once it is circulating in the human population, let's say in November, let's say by mid-November, something like that. At that point, there are flights every day uh, in and out of China and all other parts of the world. And you got people going uh, for tourism, for business to China and back. And so, yeah, this virus can spread, does spread, and probably is in most countries a little earlier than we can document. It's only when there's a case um, where a little bit of uh, tissue has been saved that you can actually go back and then investigate later and figure out that, yes, okay, somebody did have it, didn't have it, something like that. Now, if people are still alive, you can potentially go back and look for antibodies, which would tell you that the person has had the virus at some point, but it doesn't mean that they necessarily had it in December or January. It means that they could have had it, you know, about two weeks ago is the earliest you would see antibodies. And so, yeah, you got to even be cautious about that. It's, it's, it's a really difficult thing to go back and demonstrate. I guess that's what I'm uh, trying to point out. So from what happened in the U.S. and in Europe, we can be pretty sure that the virus was there before it was recognized. Um, and it just takes a while. It takes a while for a person to get sick enough and decide to go to a hospital, not just stay at home until they get better or don't. And um, it takes uh, a while to start noticing a trend. If one person drops over after, you know, uh, something like a cold in, or something like a flu in flu season with um, cardiac arrest, this is a thing that happens um, and is unrelated to COVID. It's a thing that happens every winter. So getting enough of those to actually be able to see the trend and then being able to go back and unpick the data and figure out what was going on, this is tricky. Now, 
Um, because this is the sun, it doesn't have a whole lot of scientific detail in it. And uh, once again, the sun never, never change, never change. <laughs> um, but what would be really interesting is to get a sequence of the virus. Because if you can read out the entire virus, the virus is like a clock and its RNA genome um, picks up mutations. And so it's got 30,000 little pieces that can change. And they kind of change one at a time, uh, occasionally maybe two at a time, but probably just one at a time. And once it's made a change, say it changes nucleotide 10,000, you know, from an A to a C. Yeah, I don't even know if it's supposed to be an A, whatever. Um, then what are the odds that it changes that particular nucleotide back to exactly the one that it started with? Fairly small, you know. One out of 30,000, that's the full length, plus you've got to have the exact right mutation out of four, so yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, one out of 90,000, uh, roughly. Compare that to what are the odds that it puts in a mutation anywhere else, and the odds are, yeah, of course it's going to put in a mutation somewhere, and it's going to be some other mutation. So you can spot these little mutations popping up, and then each new virus that gets passed on has all the old mutations plus maybe one new one, maybe two new ones somewhere. And so you can track the virus. And so if they were able to sequence the virus completely, um, and somebody may be working on this, um, I, I would certainly hope, then you could actually pinpoint in time when this virus is from, and that would help you understand what happened here. So if this virus is actually older than the oldest sequence that we've got, so the oldest sequence we got was um, isolated sometime around the end of December. Before this, it was like a disease and they didn't have they didn't have the virus isolated. They weren't sure exactly what's causing the disease. But then they pick up this virus in a person, get the sequence, put it out there pretty quickly. And um, yeah, from that point, we have like our starting point. So if it has that sequence, then it's a virus from right about the same time as that one, from the end of December. And yeah, that's interesting. If it has a sequence that has some of the mutations that we know happened later um, and uh, tend not to appear in every lineage of the virus, then we know that this is actually something that he probably caught while in hospital or after being sick with something else. You can date it based on what the virus looks like, which is really cool. It's molecular epidemiology. If this is a virus from before December, it should have mutations in it that we do not see in any of the available strains. It should look like the early version, but with maybe two or three, uh, yeah, maybe two additional mutations that are not found in anything uh, that's existed since. And a virus like that would be real good evidence, uh, that sequence, that it was actually uh, something that he caught, and I don't know how, yeah, but people move around and uh, Britain is a hub. It's got great airports. Yeah, I've been to them. I don't like standing in the long lines, but whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that's my fault for not being British, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it, that's how you would figure this out. So right now we've got speculation from a person who's just at, lost her father and is really mad and is not, uh, at least according to the article, uh, a scientist in any way. And that's fine. This is what she thinks and feels. And it's like an emotional, personal story. I, I would just say don't take emotional, personal stories as science and as things that are reproducible, repeatable, evidence-based, anything like that. They're, they're a different kind of story. And uh, yeah, yeah. Humans, uh, we, we work in all kinds of different stories. So there we go. That was a very long one, but it's a detailed explanation. It's like a long answer to a question that I think a lot of people have. Um, so hopefully that'll help. And you can come back to this later when somebody else says, no, I had it in whatever, October. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Maybe, but there are ways to figure it out, and those are the ways. Yeah, so thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.